Hello, I'm Sergey from the University of Luxembourg, and this is joint work with Pedro Moreno Sanchez and Matteo Maffei from TOV. In this work, we study the Lightning Network. As you may know, Bitcoin scales poorly because all nodes must validate everything, and there are two major approaches to solve this problem, the on-chain approach and the off-chain approach. Here we focus on the Lightning Network. It is an example of the off-chain uh, scaling, uh, scaling approach, and it is a payment channel network for Bitcoin. It does not require modifications in the Bitcoin protocol itself, and it is already used and deployed in practice with more than 1,000 Bitcoins locked in more than 30,000 channels as of time of this recording. It introduces new security and privacy challenges, which we aim to study in this work. First of all, let's revisit how payment channels work in general. So imagine we have Alice and Bob, and they want to exchange cryptocurrency transactions without confirming each one of them on the blockchain. So we have the off-chain realm and the on-chain realm. And first of all, Alice opens the payment channel by committing some of her coins into a multi-signature output. These coins now can be spent in one of two ways, either by Alice and Bob collaboratively or by Alice herself after a certain timeout. This is necessary in case Bob goes offline. Then Alice and Bob can exchange signed transactions uh, without committing them, them to the blockchain and distribute coins uh, between each other into different proportions. Nine coin, coins to Alice and one coin to Bob, then eight coins to Alice and two coins to Bob, seven coins to Alice, three coins to Bob, and so on. Finally, for instance, Bob wishes to close the channel and he can take the latest transaction, sign it and submit it to the blockchain. Uh, and uh, his output will be time-locked in order to let Alice dispute this channel closure in case it was malicious. It is expensive to open channels between every two users in the network because every channel opening and channel closure incurs transaction fees and requires uh, waiting for the confirmations. Therefore, the idea is to leverage paths of payment channels between the sender and the receiver who are not directly connected. And of course, the key challenge here is to ensure atomicity. So in this simple example, Alice, Alice wants to pay Charlie through Bob. So she gives 101 coins to Bob and Bob forwards 100 coins to Charlie and takes one coin as a fee for his services. This is how the Lightning Network addresses the problem of atomicity in multi-hop payments. Uh, it does so by using hash time-locked contracts, or HTLCs, which are uh, uh, programs written in Bitcoin scripting language, which encode the following condition. Coins go to Bob if he shows a pre-image of a certain hash before time t, otherwise the coins go back to Alice. So uh, this is how it operates. First of all, Charlie, the recipient, generates a random number r and sends the hash of this number to Alice, the sender. Then Alice initiates the creation of a series of HTLCs along the path, HTLC between herself and Bob, and the HTLC between Bob and Charlie. Then Charlie uses the secret number r to redeem the coins from Bob, and then Bob can use the same number r to redeem the coins from Alice. So of course, a Lightning offers some degree of security and privacy, but attacks have been reported, and in this work we aim to quantitatively analyze those. First of all, we quantify the effect of the three previously described attacks on Lightning. Then we analyze a limitation on the number of concurrent payments that Lightning Network can handle, and we discuss a new denial-of-service attack vector related to this limitation. So first of all, let's revisit some of the attacks that were previously described. First, we have the value privacy attack, where the attacker wants to learn how much is being transacted. And this is not difficult for the attacker if the attacker is on the payment path, because the payment amounts are not encrypted. Then we have the relationship anonymity attack, where an attacker wants to learn who is paying to whom. And again, if the attacker controls multiple nodes along the payment path, it is very easy to do, because all the HTLCs that belong to the same transaction are linked by using the same hash value. Finally, we have the wormhole attack, where an attacker also controls uh, at least two nodes along the payment path, but there are some honest nodes in the middle who are the victim of this attack. So the attacker shortcuts the payment and takes the fees from the honest participant, and as a result, uh, first of all, the fees uh, get, get taken away and the uh, capital locked up in the channels adjacent to the victim node is also locked until the timeout expires, which uh, incurs opportunity cost for the victim. This is the outline of our experiment where we try to measure um, how likely are these attacks depending on a number of factors. First, we assume that a certain subset of nodes is compromised. Then we 
generate a random sender and a receiver and find all paths suitable for a given payment between them. Then we calculate how many of these paths are vulnerable to each of the attacks that we consider. And finally, we average the result across many random runs and arrive at the estimated probability of the attack success. So imagine we have Alice and Bob and they have multiple payment paths between them. So this path contains no malicious nodes and it's safe. Then we have path that uh, is vulnerable to the value privacy only with just one malicious node and a path that is vulnerable to both value privacy and relationship anonymity. And finally, we have a path that is vulnerable to all three attacks that we consider. So if we compile the results in a table, we see that 75% of uh, paths are vulnerable to the value privacy attack, 50% to, to the relationship anonymity attack and 25% to the wormhole attack. These are some of the results on the real-world data. So on these graphs, on the x-axis, we have the payment amount in Satoshis. And on the y-axis, we have the probability that the attack will be successful. So if we consider the left uh, graph for the value privacy, we see that the probability of the uh, success of the attack increases and we, as we increase the, no the number of nodes that we consider compromised. And in this particular instance, we consider the highest degree nodes compromised. Then if we compare the left graph to the graph in the middle, we see that the relationship anonymity also exhibits the same behavior, but it is harder for the attacker to perform this attack, and it is even harder to perform the wormhole attack. The probabilities are even lower. We discussed the trade-off between the connectivity and privacy in the Lightning Network. So on the one hand, it is uh, beneficial to route through large node, nodes with uh, high amounts of liquidity and connectivity, uh, but uh, because they probably provide higher levels of service, but on the other hand, they are more likely to be um, to be a target for the attackers or collude themselves to uh, attack the privacy of their users. Um, in this uh, example, it is exemplified by the orange path, which goes through the orange node. So the orange node is very well connected, but we don't know it may be under attack. On the other hand, uh, a payment may be routed through the green route, which goes somewhere along the periphery of the network and the payments may fail with higher probability and the liquidity may be not so high, uh, but these nodes are less likely to be attacked. Now, going to the second part of our work, we discuss how many concurrent payments can a Lightning Network uh, channel handle. So one channel can hold multiple HTLCs, which have not yet been, been resolved, but uh, the thing is that uh, each of the channel parties must be able to dispute a malicious closure of a channel on chain. And these dispute transactions must include all the unresolved HTLCs so far. And because of the limitation on the size of the Bitcoin transaction, uh, a channel in the Lightning Network cannot support more than 966 HTLCs concurrently, which we call the HTLC limit. So consider a channel which has 1 million Satoshis and uh, um, imagine that it has uh, 966 unresolved HTLCs, each of uh, the value of 1000 Satoshis. So in this case, the capacity of the channel is not yet depleted, but no more HTLCs can be added. This is what we call the HTLC depletion, or this is where the HTLC limit plays a role. So there are actually two limiting factors that um, affect the throughput of the Lightning Network, the capacity and the HTLC limit. And which of them is more important depends on the amount. First of all, we have the dust payments, very, li very little payments, where no HTLC is created uh, at all, so it's not relevant to our attack. Then we have micropayments up to approximately 2700 Satoshis, where the HTLC limit is more important. And finally, for larger payments, the capacity is more important. And we calculate that for very small payments, just above the dust limit, around half of the channels could have handled more payments concurrently, if not for the HTLC limit. And it also opens the possibility of the denial of service attack, where an attacker can block a channel not by exceeding its capacity, but by sending many uh, very small payments and exceeding the HTLC limit. And we calculate that um, an attacker can block a channel of any capacity using just five, um, 527,000 Satoshis, which is around 60 US dollars, which is uh, very beneficial for the attacker, especially for large channels. So in conclusion, we have shown that first of all, privacy attacks on the Lightning Network are possible if only a few important nodes are compromised and we quantify this effect. Then we discuss um, the limitation on the throughput and the number of concurrent payments that a Lightning Channel can handle. And um, we also discuss a related denial of service vector that lets the attacker block a channel by submitting many small unresolved payments. 
So uh, please see the full paper for details and I'm happy to answer your questions.